Today, we're going to be setting and jiving a racing spinnaker on Lake Michigan aboard Serena, a B-32 that races out of South Shore Yacht Club in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Serena is crewed by John, Kate, and Elizabeth Hayes, Catherine Hackbarth, Susie Reek, and Tom Pease of North Sales. After a quick crew briefing, John is ready to set the spinnaker. He first attaches the sheets to the two clues and the halyard to the head of the spinnaker. John attaches the inboard end of the pole to the mast, then attaches the topping lift to the topping lift bridle. The pole is then hoisted by a crew member in the cockpit to a predetermined height. John also ensures that the four guy is attached to keep the pole from skying. Once everyone is ready, the clue is pulled out to the end of the pole, which is called pre-feeding the guy. Kate then jumps the spinnaker at the mast, while Catherine tails the hoist in the cockpit. When the sail is fully hoisted, the bowman yells, made, and the trimmer sheets the sail to catch the wind. With Tom comfortably steering using a four spar carbon fiber tiller extension, let's see how the pole is set up. Each end of the four spar pole is made up of lightweight Marlon material. This pole has the trigger mechanism known as a UTR. The pole is steadied with a pole downhaul or four guy as the spinnaker will always create a constant upward force on the pole. This works in conjunction with the topping lift, which holds the pole up in the air. When racing, the crew of Serena typically uses the end-for-end -end jibe with their four-spar spinnaker pole, which is standard for boats up to 35 feet. The procedure is very straightforward. As Tom calls for the jibe, he bears off downwind. John then releases the inboard end of the pole as Susie pulls the guy back to keep the spinnaker flying. While Tom steers dead downwind as much as possible, John moves the pole to the old sheet, which is now the new guy, as he disconnects the old guy and now new sheet using the internal trip mechanism. Now let's take another look at the end-for-end -end jibe from the deck of Serena. You'll notice John has lowered the pole to a workable height while executing this maneuver, and we'll need to remember to reset the pole to the original height. And one more time, the end-for-end -end jibe as seen from the chase boat. Notice that Kate is bringing the new guy line into the boat for easier attachment to the pole. Elizabeth moves to the back of the boat to handle the running backstay, which is a critical job on these lightweight boats. Another racing maneuver for jibing a spinnaker is the dip pole jibe. This maneuver is used on boats 35 feet and larger mainly because the spinnaker pole weighs too much to be switched by hand. The key here is to make sure the mast end of the pole can be raised high enough on the mast so that the forward end of the pole can pass behind the forestay and move from one side of the bow to the other through the jibe. On light air days such as today, the spinnaker is eased down to the deck and stowed in the bag or even repacked in the turtle. In heavier air, the spinnaker should be blanketed by the main as much as possible as the halyard is released and the crew pulls the sail into the boat. 
So you can see, using a spinnaker is easily done with a crew that works together. The symmetrical spinnaker is a great sail to have in your inventory when racing downwind. And it's fun to use.